Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. My name is Rob Sabani. I'm the founder and CEO of Sparrow. Uh, we are a Microsoft for Startups company. And just wanted to thank Microsoft. You know, everyone thinks about a company as a company. I guarantee you, after working two years with Microsoft, this is a company with a kind soul. And my colleagues here are evidence that Microsoft is indeed, and all of us collectively, touching the human soul. Because if we leverage technology to touch the human soul, I think we'll create a better world. Um, Sparrow is basically in the business of uh, uh, developing sustainable social impact by marrying e-commerce and charity at the checkout page. It's basically what we call purchase with a purpose. Imagine the fire at Notre Dame. Now, all of a sudden, LVMH, if you're in the crowd, or Hermes, if you're in the crowd, could have jumped and become a leader by saying, I'll donate 1% of my proceeds to help raise funds for the earthquake, uh, I'm sorry, for the earthquake in Turkey, but uh, in the case of Notre Dame. We are currently live with two merchants, one Ebebek, and I'm very proud of them. They are donating to help victims of the earthquake in Turkey. Because even though the cameras aren't there, there are still children under the, uh, that need to be taken care of. Whoops, red card Guardiola. Um, and I have another merchant that we're working with, Laylee.com. She is donating to empower women in Iran, a country where there's discrimination against women. And so the KPIs that we've gathered are, if you give Madame Benoit from Nantes the option to shop and donate a portion, Madame Benoit will have the spiritual joy. So now it's not just Bill Gates that has the joy of giving. You're giving Madame Benoit and Madame Benoit's of the world the joy to give. And so the KPIs that we've gotten, we've seen customer engagement go up when merchants use us. We've seen revenue go up when customers use us. But the most important KPI for me personally, because I was not going to live in this world. When I was born, my esophagus was attached to my lungs and I was gonna die. I literally was gonna die. So for me, the most important KPI is that we saved the life of a three-year-old girl called Arwa. She's a refugee girl from Syria. We took her to Israel and operated on her heart. That is what entrepreneurship for positive impact is about. I thank you very much, and I know that collectively we'll be able to answer a question that was posed by Dr. Martin Luther King. What are we doing for others? Thank you. Thank you very much. You can put oh. it here, sure. And the second one is Twin Science. Twin Science helps children and prepare them for the workplace. Let's see how they do that. Hello, my name is Omer and I'm the co-founder of Twin Science and Robotics. Today, we have listened many innovative solutions to the problems our planet is facing. However, in order to make these efforts long-standing and persistent, we need to integrate sustainability we need to integrate sustainability into the current educational systems. Twin Science is a UK-based edtech startup, and we are helping children develop future-proof STEAM and AI skills through sustainable development goals. We are preparing children for the green jobs of tomorrow and equipping them with green skills to solve the world's biggest problems. Our journey has started 13 years ago in Turkey as a social responsibility project. We traveled all around the country and executed science workshops with more than 20,000 children in economically uh, underprivileged communities. Later, we have produced and hosted a TV show in CNN Turkish channel, and after that show, we decided to transform the project into an edtech startup. And once we start working closely with teachers and students uh, and schools, we realized that there is one more barrier in front of our sustainability education mission which is teachers' skill sets and time constraints. 
With Microsoft partnership, we have integrated generative AI into our digital platform. Using AI and our content library, teachers can generate all their lesson plans and learning materials linked with SDGs just in seconds. Uh, again, using generative AI, they can further analyze and follow up their students' learning journey and assign personalized educational content through our student app. And that saves teachers time to take care of each student individually. And we are helping that process by uh, providing personalized skill and progress support for children's career guidance. 90% uh, of our business uh, sales comes from B2B and B2G to schools or governments. We are providing our digital solution, teacher dashboard and student app with annual subscription model generating recurring revenue. And if the school and teachers are interested in hands-on project, we are selling our own educational hardware kits and generating transactional revenue. So far, we have reached over 1 million children, 3,000 schools in 40 countries. We have made 5 million pounds of total revenue with recurring customers accounting for half of our total, total income. Um, we have just started to monetize our digital uh, application and we have passed last year ARR in the first quarter. We have reached the break-even point and growing profitable. And beyond that, we became the impact partners of companies as Microsoft, Rolls-Royce, Ford, Boeing and reached over 500,000 underprivileged children. Now we are in an extended seed round of one million pounds to invest in our digital platform growth and scale our ARR before the Series A round investment next year. We have already got the commitment of 700K and looking for the remaining fund. Also, we are looking for environmentally conscious companies to partner with in order to deliver sustainable education to the most disadvantaged children. Thank you. Thank you very much, Twin Science It Was. And now we're going to hear about Voice It, which is a very inclusive project. I cannot wait to hear more about it. Let's go. My grandmother was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at age 40. So by the time I was born, she had lost most of her motor capabilities but more than anything, it was her speech that was impacted. And of course, that affected her ability to create a relationship with my brothers and me. This is the day-to-day -day reality for millions of people around the world with speech disabilities, correlated with a variety of underlying medical conditions, disorders, and disabilities, from cerebral palsy to different sorts of autism to Down syndrome, as well as, as, well as degenerative disease like Parkinson's or ALS, stroke brain injury. So the story, the story, the personal experience in my family was our inspiration to develop VoiceIt. We've built a speech recognition solution that learns a person's way of speaking and then translates for them in real time, enabling the person with the non-standard speech to communicate and be understood in the most natural form there is, using their voice. We utilize our proprietary machine learning mechanisms to learn the person's way of speaking and then to continue to learn and adapt, getting more accurate as they use it. So our first product, enabling in-person communication, we launched it uh, during, uh, during the pandemic on the app stores for free. And it was amazing to hear from our community around the world, because it works in different languages, how empowering and transformative it can be to be, to be understood and listened to. But at the same time, we started to understand that our technology, while empowering and transformative, we can do a lot more. In this new world of voice-activated devices, whether it's uh, Siri on your iPhone or the Amazon Alexas of the world, as our world becomes increasingly activated by voice and the way that we interface with our technologies, we can help people with speech and motor disabilities to access these devices and therefore become more independent and connected in their lives. So we uh, um, developed an API to enable our technology to be integrated into mainstream speech recognition systems um, ensuring that these mainstream devices can be accessed 
by people with non-standard speech patterns, whether it's voice assistants or video chats, e-commerce, I mean, right now, that can be anything. All major companies are involved in voice, and our vision is to ensure that these technologies are accessible to everyone. Um, we've been grateful for the support of corporate partners, investors, which include Microsoft, um, Amazon, which was one of, one of our first integrations was with Alexa, and um, we announced an integration with WebEx last week to enable someone with non-standard speech to be included at work in meetings by voice. And the sky's the limit. We're here to um, create partnerships of people who care about leveraging voice AI and technologies generally to, uh, um, be, to include everyone and to um, uh, really make an impact where it really matters. Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> so inspiring. Thank you so much. You can stay here for the Q&A. And I'll invite also Sparrow and Twin Science to join us to get your questions from the jury. Here you go. I invite you, members of the jury, to give at least one question to each speaker, please. OK, I can start. <laughs> Just um, once again, congratulations for those speeches. It's uh, very, very, very amazing what you do. Um, a very simple question for VoiceIt. Um, do you, and uh, actually that's really an investor question, do you have patented your technology? Um, and uh, yeah, do you have patented the technology? That's yes, we have several patents on our algorithms, um, but at the end of the day, um, it's, you know, the greatest barrier to entry is not just the patents, um, but also um, our large and growing database of voice recordings of non-standard speech. So we pr as we provide value to our early adopters, we grow this database and see that as the um, one of our core uh, intellectual property and assets. Thank you. Yeah, also from my end, um, super impressive what you're doing. And I had a question for Twin Science. I'm just wondering, how do you measure educational progress um, in uh, your engagements? Uh, in two ways, actually. We are working with independent uh, research organization or universities so that they can come, observe, uh, make interviews with teachers and students and creating a report. We have got impact reports. And also our digital application enables to collect data so we can uh, see the children's activities uh, and then uh, coming up with a uh, progress report. Yeah, thank you again to everybody. Um, really, really lovely pictures. So I'm going to um, have a conversation about Sparrow, which I also uh, loved as well. Um, the idea of spiritual joy is just tremendous, and I think there's not enough of it in the world. So that was really totally nice. Totally agree. That was really nice to hear. Um, so I wanted to sort of understand, maybe, and uh, so maybe understand a little bit about um, how you, you manage the tension between retail which is about consumption and the idea of sort of doing well and I wondered if, if you had any guardrails about sort of who you worked with or how you were working or whether at the moment you're just in that you know you're just in that absolutely scale-up mode where you you're welcoming any any partners to answer your question first of all we call it purchase with a purpose and it's a JavaScript that is patented. We have six patents, actually. Um, this is just one of our products. But it's a JavaScript that can go on the shopping cart of any merchant anywhere in the world. So the spiritual joy that I was talking about could be extended globally. It's not just Madame Benoit in Nantes. It's Mrs. Johnson in my hometown of McLean that can have that joy. We are agnostic in terms of the merchants, but in terms of charities, uh, we want to make sure that they are charities that are truly, truly impactful. And there's another aspect of it and why merchants like what we're doing. We could be that ESG validator, right? Instead of company X greenwashing or you know claiming, we Sparrow are collecting all the information on the back end and we can say, we're planted a thousand trees. We've helped so many Ottawa's. We've done X, Y, Z. So it, it's basically um, an ESG play as well. 
Thank you. Um, so to go back to voice it, um, fascinating solution. And I agree, like the, the extension of use cases for what you're doing is, uh, is so broad. But that also links to my question. Do you have any kind of market estimate? And if so, could you, a market size estimate? And if so, could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, of course, yeah. Thank you for the question. And um, one of the things we've, we've talked about actually throughout this conference is when we're bu building something, an impact business, an uh, impact technology, can we also show a business case, which is equally important. Um, when we talk about people with speech disabilities, um, it's estimated, or communication disorders, it can be up to 1% of the population. Um, so it, it, sometimes it's interesting if, if this audience were less, were um, more interactive, Sometimes we've asked audiences, well, this seems, you know, does this seem like a small market? And people raise their, their hands. But then we ask the question a different way. Raise your hand if you've been touched by someone with one of these disorders or disabilities, with one of these underlying medical conditions, and nearly everyone has been touched. So it is bigger than we think, um, and it includes as well, and I just mentioned the 1%. Um, there's also the situation of aging adults, where people above a certain age, they might not have a certain uh, disease, but because of neurological conditions affecting their speech, they're not um, understood by standard speech recognizers. So that's a huge market for us, and that can be about 9% of the population. Um, and then broader, um, as of course, with, with a lot of us in building impact technology, we're starting with disabilities. We're including aging adults, but then at the end of the day, um, it's uh, benefiting anyone who has non-standard speech. If you have an accent, if anyone here is speaking a minority language that isn't supported by standard speech recognizers, those are also the people that we intend to include in what is essentially the voice revolution. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, congratulations to you three on your project. Thank you for sharing them with us. It's so inspiring and it gives me a lot of hope and I'm sure to the whole audience. Thank you to the jury as well for their presence, for their feedback, for their questions. I'm sure you'll be continuing everything in the networking area. Thank you to everyone here for sharing this moment. Uh, Microsoft Entrepreneurship for Social Change.